Let's get ready to story! And I forgot my program, so I'm just gonna make up three words. No, no I don't. <clears throat> Although, um, I will say, uh, this next reader does win the Ted Mikulowski Award for longest biography. <laughs> You were at Banshee when we did this last time. <laughs> Some light ribbing towards Ted, but but now this next young lady <clears throat> who's going to give this some international flair. No, we already had international flair, so good. <clears throat> let's see, three words. Uh, let's see, um, bangers. Um, dentistry. dreams of being a stripper. Faded early when uh, at seven years old I gained some, a little bit of shyness and I decided instead that I would be an actress. Yes, that reliable, safe, sensible, secure profession of thespianism. <laughs> Until I was 16. And at 16 I was called to my career guidance officer's office and uh, she summoned me to sit down and she said, Eleanor, now Lovely. We have to sleep. She was twiddling her sizable mole at the same time. She said, really? Acting? Do you know that 99.9% .9 of actresses are out of work? You should really do something sensible. You should go to university and study a science. And you know what? At the age of 16, and having this future of unemployment ahead of me, uh, I thought that she's right. She's my elder. I should respect my elders. I should do what she says. <laughs> so I went off, I toddled off, I packed up in a little shoebox my acting medallions, my audition pieces, and my theatrical hopes and dreams, and I went to Southampton University to study biology. Biology. Interesting. <laughs> I didn't love biology. I don't really even like it. Uh, I kind of embraced biology, but like a bit like one like uh, a cousin with really bad B.O. <laughs> but I worked really hard and actually um, I, I did pretty well. Uh, and I remember though, you know, this is a while now, but of all my sort of three years of working hard at biology, I only remember one fact with absolute clarity. And seeing as we're coming up to the Christmas party season, I'm going to share it with you now because I think it's fascinating. So. This is the one thing I remember from my biology degree. If a barnacle, you know, a sedentary crustacean, if a barnacle were a man, its penis would be as long as Nelson's column. I think that's pretty fascinating. Now, Nelson's column, for those who don't know, is a monument in London in Trafalgar Square. It stands 169 foot tall. It's covered in pigeon poo, but it's still 69, uh, 169 foot tall. I think if that's a man, that's pretty it's the fact that stayed with me, y'all. Okay, so um, that's the one thing I remember. But, you know, I worked really hard and I got through it. You know, I strived to get through my finals and I studied my off. And because um, I knew that the end was in sight, that at the end of biology, I could go to drama school. I would go to Bristol Old Vic. My Valhalla, my Eden, my promised land, my Oz. I would go. And, uh, and I applied while I was doing my finals, and I got accepted through the first round, and then I auditioned, and, and then I was invited to attend the very select Bristol Old Vic workshop weekend. Oh. I thought I was the shit. <laughs> I thought I was Judy Dench, and Kate Blanchett, and, and Kate Beckinsale, and uh, Kate Winslet, all sorts of swell. Of acting awesomeness. I, I just knew I was in the zone, I was primed, I was prepared, I dusted off my little shoebox and, uh, and I got out my audition piece. 
pieces. And my favourite was my le uh, the, the lesser known uh, Shakespeare pieces, was a piece from Titus Andronicus, the part of Lavinia. And, uh, and I practiced this. I practiced this in the mirror. I practiced this in my computer screen. I practiced this to my mother. My poor mother had to listen to it so many times. But anyway, so I was ready for this workshop weekend. Now, this workshop weekend, interesting, it, it wasn't just your audition piece. It started off with a physical. Now, at the time I was about 90 pounds, I, I could lift like a bag of sugar, but that was about it. And, and the first thing I had to do was a physical workshop that was squatting for an hour. Squatting for an hour. Now, I know African tribal women give birth like this. They spend many, many hours like this, but I was not used to this. I stoically smiled to about 10, but about halfway through, I thought, good lord, I the lactic acid, the acid Behind my patella, by the way, in fact. Uh, and I felt that like, like burst off. And, uh, and so I fell to the ground, I'm like in this fetal position. No, mommy, stop. And, and, and the squat Nazi, this workshop woman with a strange military lesbian hairdo, and she's like, Get up, Jones. And uh, she said, Come on, what are you made of? And I said, oh, My knees hurt. And she said, I don't care, give up, give me 50. I said, Do you think I was auditioning for the army? I was auditioning for drama school. She had nothing on it. Made this definitive strike, and I thought, oh shit. <laughs> so I hauled up and I carried on squatting as lamely as I could, but I knew that I had done something really bad. So, the next part of the audition was doing the Shakespearean one. I thought, okay, this is it, Jones. That's where you've got to save it. <laughs> so, we went into the audition room. There was uh, th three audition uh, adjudicators the big one, the head honcho in the middle with his bald pate. Let's call him. Bastard pug face. <laughs> he, was he called my name first. I said, oh shit, I've got to go first. Okay. Um, props to uh, Matt for going first. Anyway, so I, I, I went, okay, I've got this. I'm in the zone. I'm primed. I can do this. Judy Dench, Judy Dench. <laughs> so I reached my hand imploringly and I began. Sweet Lord, entreat her. Hear me but a word. Now, for those of you who don't know Titus <laughs> it's a cheery little Shakespeare. <laughs> I was like part of Lavinia, and she's pleading to be murdered rather than gang raped by two brothers. Uh, now, what actually happens, spoiler alert, is, uh, is that the two brothers rape her and then cut out her tongue. Ah. Yeah, it's cheery. Uh, Shakespeare. <laughs> so, uh, so I do my piece, and I stop, and he stops me five lines in. And I'm like giving it my own. I'm like, it's like theatrical. I'm like cracking up my uh, open my rib cage and my little heart is like fluttering out and bastard pug face is like bang and, uh, and he said, Eleanor, oh, Eleanor, uh, 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 I'm gonna stop you. Really? Because you just have. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right then. And I want you to start again from the top. But this time, this time, I want you to do it as a boiling piece of broccoli. I just humiliated myself at squats. So, fuck it. Broccoli. Okay, bring it up. So there I am. And I'm simmering. And I'm bleeding. And I'm, I'm starting to rage and boil and flagellate and flail. And finally I'm on my knees and I've got like spit all over my face. And I'm like face down in these floorboards with filthy dirty cracks bet between on the floor. And I think, fuck this. Lavinia is not. Bastard pug face didn't call my name at the end of the audition. It really didn't matter that he didn't ask me to stay on for the rest of the weekend. Because I decided right then and there I was not going to pay $50,000 for a year for the next three years to learn how to become a boiling vegetable. I would instead uh, decide that I would go to London and I would proudly waitress whilst I auditioned. And I would actually get my second audition and spend the next three years touring around the UK and then be given a vacation in October 2003 where I would come over to Florida and I would meet a man from West Pittston who would change my future irrevocably. So it's funny the domino rally of choices and how one thing can lead to a completely different unplanned future. So the moral of my story 
is frozen vegetables, however unpalatable.